How far do you go? This is where I gotta deal with from um, building computers right there. And then you gotta stand. Ready? Go. And you gotta do handstand. Lift your legs up. I'm too scared. This is scary. You're gonna kill me. Lift one leg up. Hey, what's up, everyone? Danny here. This video is for the next gaming PC build for the channel. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me to do a build around $400 to $500, probably because a lot of my previous builds have been like $300 or less. So I listened and I targeted a price of $500. Now at this price point, I was looking for the ability to play games at 1080p comfortably anywhere from very high to ultra settings. Now you could also creep into 1440p depending on what the title is and if you adjust the settings a bit, but I was mostly looking to almost max out or completely max out any title at 1080p. Now this is also the first time I've worked with a company to complete a build. Um, most of the hardware I deal hunted and purchased myself, but Cooler Master was kind enough to send over a couple of parts, uh, parts that I specifically chose that I thought fit within the budget reasonably. And uh, I'm really excited to have a working relationship with them now because uh, they're a company that I bought from plenty of times in the past and I hold them in very high regard. But enough talking, let's check out the build and see what I was able to put together. Okay, so as always, we'll start with a look at all the parts that I used in the build. I'll talk about why I chose each of the parts and the prices paid, which will include taxes, cost of shipping, and rebates if applicable. Also, for the parts that Cooler Master sent over, I will be using real equivalent prices since it wouldn't be fair to say that these parts cost zero dollars. That would incorrectly skew the price to performance ratio for anyone who wanted to build something similar. So the actual prices were taken into consideration when putting this together. First up is the CPU motherboard and RAM, which I found is a really good used combo deal on Craigslist. It was $185 and consists of a locked i5-6600, an H110 motherboard, and one 8GB stick of DDR4 RAM. Price-wise, it'd break down like this per component. $125 for the CPU, $30 for the motherboard, and $30 for the RAM. The i5-6600 is the highest-end locked i5 processor from Skylake. This is a quad-core processor with four threads. It has a base frequency of 3.3GHz and a turbo boost of up to 3.9GHz, which will be plenty for gaming and won't bottleneck any GPUs until you're well beyond the budget we're targeting for this build. With the release of Ryzen 5, I'm seeing a lot of YouTubers tell people to stray away from i5s at the moment, and I partially agree with this. If you're buying new parts, definitely go for Ryzen 5. It provides much better value in this matchup. In the used arena, however, the i5 can still contend as the prices will be lower than Ryzen 5 since that's still relatively new, and I actually haven't been able to find any used Ryzen 5 parts. And when I do start seeing the first ones pop up, I can almost guarantee that they'll still be listed for near retail value, whereas Skylake processors have dropped quite a bit since their release. The MSI H110 Micro ATX board in this combo is just your basic motherboard. There's not much to say here, it gets the job done, and I'm usually one to recommend going with the low end budget chipsets if you're not overclocking. So for Skylake, I will usually only point to H110 or Z170 depending on if you have a locked processor or not. There are some one-off situations for getting something in between these chipsets, and that's if you stumble across a really good deal on them, or if you need some of the additional features like more RAM slots, SATA ports, or USB ports, but I found that most people gravitate towards either the H110 or Z170. The Hynix RAM is 2133MHz and has no heat sinks, so it's pretty plain looking, and some would say that it's borderline ugly, but with the crazy prices of RAM right now at around $50-$60 to $60 for 8GB, I was glad that this combo came with any RAM at all. One stick allows for upgrading to 16GB in the future with the second DIMM slot in the motherboard. To cool the CPU, we're going with the Hyper 212 Evo that Cooler Master provided. The combo did not come with a stock cooler, so I had to allocate budget for it. And instead of spending around $10 for a stock heatsink on like eBay or Amazon, I figured that adding another $10 would be worth it to get the performance of something like the Hyper 212. Even though we're not overclocking, we'll still see benefits with overall lower fan noise and temperatures compared to a stock cooler. The Hyper 212 EVO has stayed the same price for basically forever. I have used this cooler more so than any other coolers across all the builds I've done and helped others put together. And it can commonly be found at $20 after sales and rebate. And at this price, it's a great cooler. The graphics card I'm using for this build is the 4GB MSI 290X Gaming with the Twin Frozer 4 cooler. I got this a while back for $140 on Reddit Hardware Swap, which at the time was a great deal. But then the RX 480 lowered in price near the start of 2017, and you can get it for like $140 or $150 new with sales and rebate, which made this 290X deal not so great considering the 480 is newer, performed the same or slightly better in most situations, and consumed less power. 
But now we're into May of 2017 and the prices of 480s have gone back up since they stopped production on them and the slightly higher clocked RX 580s that's replacing them are still around $200. So this card for $140 goes back to being a decent deal. Though I've seen people getting them for as low as $120 to $130. So I'd target that price if you were looking to get one. The hard drive I'm using for this build is a laptop drive. It's a 1TB Seagate solid state hybrid drive. I got this on Craigslist for $25 from a guy who upgraded his laptop from it to an actual SSD. From my experience, these drives are basically the same as typical mechanical drives. I have yet to see the 8GB of flash memory in it make any noticeable difference in terms of loading or booting up, likely due to the drive randomly choosing what it thinks is the most important to store on the flash memory, rather than like me being able to actually choose specifically what to put on it. Either way, it's a lot of storage and it was cheap and had less than 2000 hours on it and it had good health according to the smart test. For the power supply, I went with a used Corsair CX600 which I got on hardware shop for $30. It's not modular, but that's no issue since the case we're going to be using for the build will easily be able to hide the extra cables, and at least it has braiding to hide most of the ketchup and mustard colors. 600 watts will be plenty to power any single graphics card system. Finally, we get to the case, which was provided by Cooler Master, the Master Case 5. I've seen this case go for as low as $75 after sales and rebate, and to me, I think it's a great case for the price. It's a mid-sized tower that supports motherboards from mini ITX to extended ATX and features Cooler Master's freeform modular system. This basically allows you the flexibility and customization of the case internals to your specific needs. The case I got was the base version because there's a pro version that comes with more, but the base version comes ready to go right out of the box and it functions perfectly as is. There are two included 140mm fans, one intake and one exhaust. It's got a pretty solid construction and added bonuses like the built-in velcro for cable management, a power supply shroud to easily hide extra cables, discrete 2.5 inch hard drive mounts on the shroud, and of course my favorite part about this case, the freaking handles man. When it comes to things that go crazy over in the case, the cube form factor is at the top of my list but a very close second is built-in rugged handles. The ability to maneuver your case makes it so much nicer, especially if you partake in LAN parties like I do. But even if you don't, it's super useful if you want to move your case around a lot, whether it be to tinker with and swap parts out, or if you take it out to blow out dust frequently. These handles are awesome, and I love the look and utility of them. They're super rigid, and they give you a really good solid grip on the case for all your transporting needs. For the operating system, we're going to go with unactivated Windows 10 because it's free and I've used it so much now that the lack of ability to change wallpapers and the watermark in the corner doesn't even phase me anymore. In past build videos, viewers are always commenting things down below regarding cracking the OS, buying gray market keys, or even lying to Microsoft to get the assistive technology upgrade. And these are all things that you can do, but I just go with unactivated windows since it's pretty hassle free and I'm not going to explicitly tell you to do something that may be frowned upon. So the grand total of this mixed new and used system comes up to $475. Here's a quick time lapse of me putting together the build. I had a lot of extra room inside the case since I used a micro ATX board and it was super easy to build in. I can't think of any issues or problems I ran into while assembling it, it was pretty much smooth sailing. And here's what it looks like complete, cable managed and everything. So now let's look at the performance of this PC. I'll let you know the settings used for each of the benchmarks as well as show you an actual snippet from each of them so that you can see the real world performance as well as how much the hardware is being utilized throughout. And as far as overclocking goes, I overclocked the 290X to an even 1100MHz on the core and 1400 on the memory. I tried to get it to 1133MHz on the core for an exact 10% overclock but I ran an artifacting no matter how much I changed other parameters. So 1100MHz it is which is about 6-7%. But yeah, other than that, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks.
So if we look at this PC and compared it to any of my like 200 to $300 builds, it's pretty clear to see where the money went. Most of the price difference went right into the CPU and GPU, which gives you the most direct performance gains. But I did allocate some towards the case. Now, some would argue that spending more on the case does not give you any noticeable performance benefits, which I completely agree with. But I think if you had a little bit extra money in your budget and you can afford it, grabbing a nicer case is worth it as it's something that can last you through multiple upgrade cycles and even multiple builds. Also, the amount I allocated towards the case wasn't enough to get like the next graphics card, which in this case would be a GTX 1070, or jump you up to the next tier of CPU, which would be either an i7 or a Ryzen 7. Those would have required a lot more money, so you're probably not going to be able to fit those in a $500 budget build easily. Overall, I'm happy with how the build turned out, and I'm super excited that I was able to work with that case. It's really cool, I love the handles, and I'm really glad I was able to make a video with it. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. So if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of the build. And if you had more money, what would be your next first upgrade? For me personally, I would upgrade first thing to an SSD. Um, I wanted to fit this in the budget, but I couldn't. It would have gone over $500. But if I had more money, this would be the first thing I upgrade. It would be a lifesaver on boot times as well as loading those priority, you know, daily use programs. Um, and whether or not I put this in the build, the benchmarks would have basically been the same. Uh, but let me know what you would have done in terms of the next upgrade. But uh, yeah, I just want to give a huge thanks to Cooler Master for sending the parts out. And thank you all, as always, for watching. So I look forward to reading your comments down below as well as seeing you in the next video. Bye.